Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This program is brought to you by Regional Dairy Specialists with Cornell Cooperative Extension. Today we'll, we will be discussing critical calf care, decision making for urgent dairy calf health situations. This is episode four where, where we will cover hydration status and electrolytes. This is the fourth episode in a seven part series. If this is the first portion of the series you are viewing, we hope you will tune in to our other sessions as well. Recordings will be posted on the Northwest New York YouTube page. As a reminder, this content has been approved by the National Milk Producers Federation FARM team as continuing education. Add your participation in this program to your records for your next animal care audit. Today's presenters are myself, Betsy Hicks, with the South Central New York Dairy and Field Crops Program, and Margaret Quasdorf with the Northwest New York Dairy Livestock and Field Crops Program. Both of us are dairy specialists within our respective areas. Before we jump in, we do want to remind everyone that we are not veterinarians and the materials presented are for educational purposes. We strongly encourage all farms to have a veterinary client patient relationship and that you consult your veterinarian as the need arises. In this specific episode, we are going to cover everything surrounding hydration topics. We're going to talk a little bit about evaluating dehydration. We're going to discuss methods of hydration, including electrolytes and IV administration. And then we're going to finish off with some other considerations. So to start off with, we're going to talk a little bit about scours and whether they're nutritional or uh, pathogenic. When we're talking about scours, we are basically referring to a calf that is experiencing diarrhea, whether it be a pathogen or nutritional factor causing it. And you can check out webinar five for more information on nutritional factors causing loose manure. When you have a sick calf with scours, they can be in danger of severe dehydration. So it is important to recognize this quickly in order to intervene and have the best chance for the calf to recover. Just as a reminder, the University of Wisconsin has a great resource in the calf health scoring chart. One of the sections in this chart is the fecal scoring system. You can use this system to help assess level of scouring in calves, which is a good first point to look at when monitoring for hydration status. All right, so now we're going to get into a little bit of the overall appearance of the calf when we start to evaluate dehydration. So in the middle picture here, we've got this calf and she looks a little depressed, right? So that's one of the first things we're going to look at is we're going to look at the overall demeanor of the calf. Does she have droopy ears? This calf in this picture, she's got those droopy ears. Next thing we might look at is dull hair coat and sunken eyes. And this calf, she appears to have, you know, maybe the dull, the hair coat doesn't look as great as it should. Um, and we don't have a great view of her eyes. So that's something we're gonna discuss in a little bit. Going a little bit further, we can look physically in the calf's mouth and see if it's dry. We can assess if her nose is dry. And if she stands and goes to urinate, we can see if there's a lot of urine or not much urine and, and assess the color of it. Again, the scours thing, we can assess her consistency of her fecal matter. And if we look at her suckle response, we might see in a dehydrated calf that she has a delayed suckle response. And then we'll talk a little bit about the skin tent response. So first off, let's look at eye appearance. So we've got these two calves side by side and the first calf, calf A, has a very normal eye appearance. You can see the eye is bright. There's no space between the lower eyelid and the eyeball. You can see some of the whites of the eyes. This calf on the left is very healthy, normal, dehydra normal hydration status. Calf B, however, you can see this severe gap between the eyeball and that lower eyelid. The length of the distance between the eyeball and the eyelid tells us a little bit about the percent dehydration that that calf is experiencing. Um, so this calf on the right in this picture, this calf is severely dehydrated. She has over 10 millimeters between the eye and the lower eyelid. Um, we can look at this 10 millimeters dis distance as being over 12% dehydrated. 
in a situation like this, death is imminent for this calf if she is not treated aggressively. And in some situations, it actually may be too late for her. Moving on to the skin tent test. So there's a really good video out there put out by Milk Specialties Global that uh, shows you how to do an effective skin tent to assess. But basically, we're gonna choose an area of skin on the neck close to the shoulder. We're gonna pinch it, twist it 90 degrees and release it. And after we release, we're gonna count the number of seconds until it turns back to normal. When we are trying to assess dehydration by physical means, um, we can put together the demeanor of the calf with the eye appearance with the skin tent test. And we can better evaluate how dehydrated the calf is by using these three things combined. So a calf that is minimally dehydrated, less than 6%, she's still probably gonna act normal. Her eye is going to appear fine and her skin tenting will probably be normal. When we get to that six to 8% dehydration though, that calf will act a little depressed. Her eyeball might be a little bit sunken two to four millimeters and the skin tent might stay tented one to three seconds. Uh, when we get further down the list though, that 10 to 12% dehydrated, that calf is now gonna be comatose. She's gonna be laying flat out. The eye is six to eight millimeters uh, sunken in and skin tenting will last um, up to 10 seconds long. So those are the calves that really re need uh, some attention and rapidly. So that brings us to our first chat question. So if you've watched some of the other uh, episodes, we'd like to put in these chat questions. So down in the chat box at the bottom, you can type in your answer to this question. So our question is, how do you assess hydration status of calves on your farm? So if on your farm, you use visual, visual assessment of the eyes only, type in a one. If you use both eyes and skin tenting, you can put in a two. And if you monitor several areas, including the demeanor, the evidence of scours, her suckle response, and assessment of the eyes and skin tenting, put in a three. This way we can see how everybody else compares to what you're doing on your farm. So moving on to the good candidates for oral hydration. So in order for a calf to be effectively hydrated just by oral means, she's gotta be able to stand on her own. Typically these calves will be less than 8% dehydrated. And in this situation, these calves can be fed electrolytes via bottle or tube fader. So our patient on the right, let's talk about this 80 pound calf that's 6% dehydrated. So she's covering that less than 8% dehydrated, that's a check. Um, 80 pound calf is what she weighs. So how much fluid does she need? So we've got some simple math for this, um, but we need a little bit more information. So a gallon of fluids weighs about 8.3 pounds and there's four quarts in a gallon. So a quart weighs about two pounds. So if our 80 pound calf is 6% uh, dehydrated, that math is simple. It's 80 times 0 0.06. That's about 4.8 pounds of fluid that is needed to properly rehydrate her. So if we take that 4.8 pounds and divide it by two pounds per quart, that tells us we need about two and a half quarts to feed to her to adequately rehydrate her. It's simple math, we don't need to uh, really stress out about it. It's good to know so we can do our double check on are we adequately giving enough hydration to these calves. And so one of these last slides that I'm gonna leave you with before Margaret takes over is the four Ds. So, uh, this Drew Vermeer wrote this great, paper, uh, great article for the Progressive Dairy Canada webpage. And so he talks about diarrhea, dehydration, depression, and death. So it starts with diarrhea, right? Calves start with scouring. And if we don't correct that, they're going to go from diarrhea to dehydrated pretty quick. And then if we look further, this dehydration, if we don't correct dehydration, she's going to get pretty depressed. She's going to be like more and more sick. If we don't correct that, we're gonna progress the death. So I think this pictorial on the right really represents this great. So we see our loss of body water, that zero to 14% that we talked about, and that 8% 
that's, you know, we can get to the oral hydration above that 8%. But when we get below that 8%, the 8 to 14, that calf needs intravenous fluid therapy for sure. She's critically ill at that stage and she's going to be dead if we don't correct it. So now Margaret's going to take over and talk a little bit about the methods of hydration. Thanks, Betsy. So we're going to start by talking a little bit more about our oral electrolytes. So this right here is a list from NC State veterinarian Jeff Smith from our recent Hordes Derriman webinar, which has a lot of great information as well if you get a chance to watch. Uh, the link is going to be put in the chat box shortly for you to watch that at a later time. But anyway, so oral electrolytes are a great option for rehydrating our scarring calves like Betsy mentioned. And remember, remember that these calves are not only losing a lot of water, but they're also losing nutrients and electrolytes. And the goal when feeding electrolytes is to correct four things. And those four things are number one, the electrolyte balance, and that's mainly gonna be your sodium, potassium, and chloride. Number two, your negative energy balance. Number three, acid-base balance in the blood. And number four is the overall hydration status. So oral electrolytes are a great idea when the calf is less than 8% dehydrated and still strong enough to stand. They are quick and easy to administer, and they don't require you to use a catheter or needles or anything like that. It doesn't really require the help of a veterinarian. You can do this yourself. So um, the other thing is that oral electrolytes are also fairly inexpensive, which makes them a good first choice. But not all electrolytes are created equally. We want to pick one that does the four things that I mentioned before. So we want enough sodium in an appropriate concentration in order to pull and hold enough water to correct the dehydration in that calf. Chloride and potassium are also important for electrolyte balance. Next, you want to make sure that there's some ingredient that helps to absorb those electrolytes through the gut wall. They don't just go by themselves. Um, so you can use a volatile fatty acid, like acetate or a neutral amino acid like glycine or sugar like glucose to help you do that. Next, the electrolyte should provide an alkalinizing agent that will increase the pH of the blood and correct metabolic acidosis to help the calf feel better and prevent the downhill spiral. And finally, a good electrolyte will provide some sort of energy source, especially if calves are not consuming all of their milk rations. And of course, uh, you follow the directions on the bag to mix in the appropriate, appropriate amount of water uh, to give to these calves. So that brings us to our chat question number two. So go ahead and get ready to put your answer into the chat box below. When do you prefer to give oral electrolytes to your calves? Um, do you give them as soon as they don't finish their milk? Are you giving it in between milk feedings? Or if you have another answer, chat, uh, type that into the chat box as well. So when you give electrolytes, it's gonna vary from farm to farm, but here's some general best practices to follow while incorporating electrolytes into your feeding schedule. You wanna feed them separately from milk. Don't mix them unless it's a product that is specifically meant to be incorporated with the milk. Typically, electrolytes are not meant to just be mixed in with the milk and doing so might actually contribute contribute to more scour issues in your calves. So it's best to mix separately and then allow for adequate time between feeding milk and feeding electrolytes. Generally, you're safe with two hours in between. If possible, split up electrolyte feedings throughout the day to help the calf maintain hydration status. Maybe you feed a few hours after the morning and evening feedings, or maybe you come in at noon and later in the evening to help those calves stay hydrated. Third tip, is to maintain energy and calorie intake while the calf has scours. There's an old school way of thinking, and that was to take calves off of milk as they recover, because milk is feeding the bad bugs or the calves aren't digesting it. There's really no data that proves that this is true. So it's important that calves stay on milk throughout the time that they have scours. And there's new research that shows that these calves actually recover more quickly and continue to gain weight if they stay on that milk. Calves don't have very much body fat reserves and there's not enough nutrients and electrolytes to recover and continue to grow, so make sure you keep feeding those calves uh, through the scours. 
It's okay to skip a feeding though, but hopefully if your treatment is working, uh, 12 hours later that calf is ready to drink again. Another option to help might be to feed smaller sized meals more frequently to help get calves get that fuel that they need. And the last tip is to feed electrolytes for as long as it takes a calf to recover, which is typically about a week. After they're recovered, you don't really have to continue feeding them electrolytes, but it's good to keep that um, in the rotation as they're getting over it. That brings us to chat question number three. How comfortable are you with tubing a calf? Type in a number one, if you're very comfortable, you know what you're doing. Number two, if you feel kind of neutral about it, you can do it if you have to. And type in a number three, if you're uncomfortable and you really don't want to accidentally kill a calf. To start out, if a calf is unable or unwilling to drink on her own, correctly tubing electrolytes is a safe way to help her maintain her hydration status. But before we go into more detail about that, we want to make sure that you have a tube that is different from the one that we use to tube newborn calves or colostrum. Make sure that this is a separate tube and is used only when tubing sick calves to prevent spreading disease to newborns. Make sure that the tube is smooth and doesn't have any wear or rough areas on it that will damage the calf's throat. And if your tube looks like the one in this picture with the scratches and the dirt and stains all over it, Get a new tube. They're not that expensive. So tubing a calf can be tricky and is often an intimidating task for many. So here's a great video by Milk Specialties Global to demonstrate the proper technique for tubing a calf. Is appropriate. I'd like to start by showing how far to insert the tube. Typically, if you take the tube and place it to the shoulder of the calf and mark where the tip of the nose is. I like to put a piece of tape there and I know how far to insert. It's important to immobilize the calf and this can be done simply by backing them into the corner and stabilizing their head with your thighs. You then gently insert the tube over the tongue to the back of the throat and slowly apply pressure until the calf begins to swallow. The calf will fight slightly as he swallows it. You know you're in the proper placement when you can palpate clearly the windpipe and your tube. You then uncrimp the fluids and allow them to flow. Typically when rehydrating, we like to deliver an appropriate amount of two to four quarts. Don't try to force the fluids, allow them to flow in on their own speed. And never pull the tube before the fluids are done flowing without crimping off the tube first, as this could cause aspiration. As the calf's stomach begins to fill, he will fight a little bit more because it's slightly um, uncomfortable to feel his stomach being full, but we're almost through. After the tube is empty, you can pull it. Thank you for joining us for this session of calf management tips brought to you by Milk Specialties Global.
Okay, so now that we feel good about that, but we think that our calf could use a little more help, uh, we have an option to help rehydrate our calf using subcutaneous fluids. And these fluids are complementary to oral electrolyte therapy, and they go underneath the skin of calves that are between five and 8% dehydrated. Make sure to consult your veterinarian for which fluids are appropriate to administer in this manner. We're gonna watch another quick video by Milk Specialties to see how this is done. Hello, and welcome to this segment of Calf Management Tips, brought to you by Milk Specialties Global. I'm Elizabeth, calf specialist for the team, and today we're gonna to cover how to administer subcutaneous fluids. It's appropriate to administer subcutaneous fluids if the calf is somewhere between five and 8% dehydrated. Anything less than 5% oral rehydration is appropriate, and anything over 8% intravenous rehydration would be more appropriate. So if you're not sure of how to determine the level of dehydration in a calf, you can review our calf management tip video on evaluating dehydration. Supplies needed to administer subcutaneous fluids are a 16 gauge by one inch needle, an IV line set, and a bag of sub-Q fluids. Today we're choosing to use saline, but it's important to note that not all fluids are okay to administer subcutaneous, and not all fluids are okay to administer intravenous. It is important to consult your veterinarian to determine which fluids would be appropriate for you in your form of use. The first step in administering the subcutaneous fluids is to immobilize the calf to the best of your ability. I like to do this by backing them in a corner and securing their head and neck with my thighs. You can uncap your needle, make a tent with the skin, and place the needle gently into the skin, being careful not to administer it into the muscle. You know you're not in the muscle if you're still able to freely move the needle and it's not held taut. You may then uncrimp the fluids, elevate the bag, and allow them to flow into the calf. It is also important to note that you do not want to administer more than 200 cc's per injection site. When you pull the needle, you simply pinch the skin where the needle was in to avoid leaking. Some fluid will leak out of the skin as you move on. You can administer along the neck and along the rib cage to get the appropriate amount of fluid into the calf. We hope you've enjoyed this session of calf management tips. Have a great day. Okay, so in more serious situations where our calf is seriously dehydrated and can't get up, the only way we're gonna get this calf hydrated quickly enough is to administer IV fluids. Make sure you consult with your veterinarian for which fluids are safe to be given intravenously and at what rate and how much to use for your situation. There's a longer video showing how to do this that you can watch on your own time with the link that's in the chat box. But basically we have a very sick calf on the ground. Um, you're gonna be clipping the hair and cleaning the area over the jugular vein. Then you're gonna put gentle pressure at the base of the neck to better see the vein in order to insert the needle. You know that you've hit the vein when blood comes out the end of the needle. You'll take your tube and run a bit of fluid out to release any air bubbles before connecting the tube to the needle. Once connected, raise the bag or the bottle to start the flow and make sure that you adjust the height of the bottle for proper speed. Remove the needle when all the fluid has entered the calf. If you start to see a large bubble under the skin of the calf, your needle has come out of the vein and you'll have to try to replace it again. Sometimes it isn't easy, especially with a very dehydrated calf. So make sure you get help from a veterinarian or someone more experienced if you're having trouble. Here's a couple tips. Uh, use a proper needle gauge. Um, ask your veterinarian as it's dependent on the type of fluids you'll be administering. Another tip is to heat the fluids to normal calf body temperature, which is 1025. So you don't make the compromised calf work hard to correct the imbalance. Just put the bag or bottle in a bucket of warm water to bring the temperature of your fluids up. 
A third tip is to minimize air bubbles in the tube by running some fluid out on the ground first, as it's dangerous to allow air bubbles to enter the bloodstream. If you're at a point where this is your last effort to bring this calf back around, it might be time to think about what's best for the calf in terms of quality of life. If you don't see improvements, it may be best to consider proper euthanasia tactics. Look to our sixth webinar in the series for guidance on making this decision. This brings us to the end of this presentation with a few key considerations. Evaluate overall appearance of dehydration using several physical observations. Practice and use proper techniques while rehydrating your calves, no matter which method you choose. Use oral or sub-Q hydration when calves are able to stand on their own and are less than 8% dehydrated. And use IV hydration when calves are recumbent or laying down and you can't get them up. And the third thing to remember is not all electrolytes are created equal and make sure that you do your research and check to make sure that it contains the proper things that you need to rehydrate and get your calf going again. Thank you for joining us today and make sure you catch our next webinar on scours and nutrition, which will be on February 2nd. As for now, please submit any questions you may have from today's presentation into the Q&A feature and Betsy and I will be happy to answer what we can. Thank you. While people are putting their questions in the Q&A box, we do have a question in the chat box. Does anyone know of a good video showing how to do sub-Q in Spanish? I just found that the proper translation of the, of the video you guys shared with us. So I'm just popping in there. Um, so for everyone and for you guys too, for future reference. Great, thank you. Thanks, Rodrigo. Um, I do wanna introduce Rodrigo. Uh, Rodrigo Milano will be on our panel the very last time we meet. He was joining us today just to view, but um, he popped in as a panelist. So thanks so much, Rodrigo. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so we did get one more question come in. Is there a reason why we twist the skin when we do skin tinting? I think the main reason for doing that, I mean, pretty much every place that you look up that, you know, shows how to do skin tinting, they do do the twist. Um, basically it, it introduces um, more surface area into the skin to see if it is going to bounce back. Just by pulling up and pinching, you, you get some of the effect, but I think by doing that slight twist, you're getting more surface area. You can really see if uh, there is an adequate amount of hydration in that calf. It just gives you a better visual by doing that 90 degree twist. Anybody else want to chime in? No, I think that's why too. Helps you see a little bit better. And um, we did actually have one more question come in. So how many days in a row do you recommend to give electrolytes? I was told three days, so you're not giving them too much sodium. I think three days is good, but um, as long as that calf is continuing to scour, you wanna be able to replace uh, those fluids, but hopefully by the end of three days that you have it a little bit under control. Um, if not, then maybe you need to look into a little bit different treatment. It might be a different bug causing that issue, but it's also a really good idea to allow the calf to have free access to water at all times, or even to feed if they're only on a bottle or if they'll only drink from a bottle, maybe feed a water a quart of water in between or, or somewhere around there just to uh, maybe break up a little bit of that extra sodium so it's not just electrolytes and, and um, milk that they're getting if you're worried about that. And I would just say just double check um, your mixing directions to make sure you are giving the adequate amount of water with that electrolyte packet. Every electrolyte might be a little bit different so just verify that you're giving the right amount. So just while we're waiting for more questions to roll in, next week is Scours and Nutrition. And the following week is our CAF 911, My Calf Needs Help. Um, both of those two final presentations will be like the ones we've been seeing. And then our last time is on February 16th, where we'll have a live panel, um, including Rodrigo. So, all right, I think there's Thanks, some questions. Yeah. 